What's up, guys? Welcome back. Sure, we're back to another video. In today's video, we're finally doing something I've been waiting to do for so, so, so long, which is getting some FAD seats and getting them fully operational with these modules, this with custom wiring into this E91 M3. Honestly, after owning an FAD M3 and after owning an FAD2 M4, I honestly really, really, really miss these seats. These seats make all of a difference. I actually put these exact seats, exact same color into my 435i. I just absolutely love the Silverstone. And when eventually we paint the entire car in Lime Rock Orange, just imagine the Silverstone interior on the Lime Rock Orange. It's gonna look so, so, so good. So yeah, in today's video, we're gonna be retrofitting these two seats. We have E90, uh, I think LCI modules right here. Basically, uh, I believe you need a left-hand side and a right-hand side module. I don't know, these are the part numbers right here if you guys wanna take a look at them. You just need LCI seat modules. That's all you need because my car is a pre-LCI. If your car is an LCI, you really don't need these seat modules because you can take them out of your original seats. But since mine's are not, I need LCI module. These seats are missing absolutely everything, but we got the emblems in pretty good condition. We're gonna go ahead and get them wired up also as well, so you can get those lights working as well. This car is an M3, as you guys know, so the M badge does fit this car pretty nicely. Eventually, we'll get the M3 ones in gloss black. I think it's gonna look super sick. But in the meantime, it's definitely gonna make this interior feel a whole lot nicer. And this interior is actually going up for sale as well, so it's gonna actually help me recoup some of my money that I have on these seats with those seats. Business, business. <laughs> Anyways, I got my boy Arlo coming down here to actually help me retrofit these seats. I could probably install these seats and do a little bit of rewiring and probably get the seats to, you know, like semi work. But end of the day, I want every single function to work on these seats. This guy is an electrician. He's actually done this retrofit before and got every single function to work. So I want a guy that knows exactly what he's doing on this YouTube channel because I want this video for those of you guys out there that want to do this retrofit to watch this video and actually know how to do this retrofit. Because if I just do a simple time lapse or, you know, do some Google forums and yada, 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 and not really know what I'm doing, you guys aren't gonna know what you're doing. And I feel like a lot of people, after I get these seats in there, are gonna wanna do this retrofit. Eventually as well, I'm actually gonna get the entire interior redone in Silverstone. As you guys know, the rear seats on this car are black. I'm actually gonna take these out, get them redone in Silverstone. The door cards, I'm actually gonna sell it with the interior. I have the complete interior upstairs. Um, and I'll just sell this entire interior complete. I wanna get door cards with sunshade so I can complete my rear sunshade on this car. And I wanna get door cards with rear speaker cutouts um, so I can actually install all four speakers because on, because on wagons, you actually don't have that rear deck. So E90s have the rear deck, so the speakers are not there. I need E91 door cards or at least a Harman Kardon door card or something like that to where I actually have some speaker cutouts right over here as well. And then I'm actually gonna redo that in Silverstone, redo the front door cards in Silverstone and redo an armrest in Silverstone. I'm probably gonna sell that again with the interior, probably get a black one and just get it redone in Silverstone. Let me know what you guys think. Obviously red interior is super, super, super sick, but I think if I get the car painted orange, it'll just look a little weird with red interior. I think it's a little too much. I feel like orange with the white or orange with the silver stone is gonna look really, really, really good. So you guys can let me know down below. But without further ado, I'll cut back to you guys uh, when I'm waiting on two people. The guy that's bringing me my Taco Bell, which is Jonathan, shout out to him, and the guys that are coming here to help me make this happen. So, see you guys soon. So finally guys, we got the boys over. What's up, man? What's up, man? So these are the legends that are gonna actually help make this all come true. So um, what we're gonna do right now first is actually just remove the two front seats, get those out of the way, and then, we're actually, and then you guys are actually gonna show us how to do the wiring, right? Yeah. Right. To a yeah. degree? Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> but um, basically, uh, you guys said that we need this module, right? Right. You said we needed a connector. What else do we need uh, other than the seats, this module? Yeah, this module, you got to make sure uh, the last number right here is 61. That's for heated seats. If you don't have uh, heated seats, it ends in 60. So, oh, mm -hmm. so these are heated. These are heated. Oh my yeah. God, that was lucky. I don't know, you actually you sent me the part now. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so we're graving the Navy, we're graving yeah. the Navy. And then we needed a connector or we don't need a yeah, connector? Yeah, we just need one connector to make your uh, lighting work function. So when you open the doors, it's like, like an M4, like an M3. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you guys don't care about the light, you won't need a connector. You'll literally just need this module, this seat and some repinning, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Any yeah. soldering or no? No, uh, you don't need soldering, but you also need to reuse the, the seat belt. Uh, seat belt? The, the buckle. The buckle. You need to reuse the buckle from the seats. They bolt on, no problem. Okay. And yeah, these LCI modules, uh, they're plug and play to the M4 seats. They, I guess they decided not to change the wiring. That's good for us. God bless, bro. Job easier. <laughs> 100%. And then yeah. a little bit of coding. Yeah, I think oh. you just have to disable the the seat occupancy sensor, just because it's newer tech, it just doesn't interface with the E90 at all. So you, you code that out, and that's pretty much all you have to do, really. So if we code out the seat occupancy sensor, I'm assuming we're not gonna have airbag light then, right? Correct, no airbag. Hey! 
that's all I'm talking yeah. about. So we'll show you guys how we pretty much get everything done here. I want you guys to pretty much have like a DIY breakdown of pretty much installing FAD seats into any of your e-chassis cars. This should apply the same way for an E92, Correct. 328, 335, right? Correct. Cool, yeah. cool. So without further ado, guys, uh, let's go ahead and just get the old ones out. So on my boy Arlo is moving the seats, getting them fully disconnected, taking out all the bolts necessary and disconnecting the harness. I actually went around back and started disconnecting the battery to make sure when he actually disconnects the harness, we don't get any airbag lights and we don't have any airbag issues because it's the last thing we want to do uh, when swapping out these seats. Once we actually got pretty much the seats out of the car, um, we started putting the FAD seats uh, on top of the table and just getting that thing pretty much ready, starting to reference, looking back and forth and seeing what we actually need to do. Uh, the first thing we went ahead and did um, is just removing the seat buckle off the OEM uh, E90 M3 seats and actually disconnecting um, all the individual cables from the uh, harness clip. Reason being is that we actually need to transfer over the harness clip, the, uh, the, the I guess you call it the pigtail, um, onto our new F80 seats. So just plug in like plug and play straight into our uh, E90X chassis. Um, also, not only will we need the pigtail, all the connectors and the uh, seat buckle, but we also need to transfer over that module that I was talking about earlier, guys. Um, just because that is an E9X module, um, the car will recognize it. You can actually code that in. Um, these F80 modules, I don't think you can code them in. So that's why we just literally took out the F80 module, put in the E9X LCI modules, um, and they're just direct plug and play. Um, and actually they worked without any coding necessary um, right off the get go. So that was super nice. Um, what you guys see us doing here in the end is just pretty much taking out all the pins um, from the factory harness so we can transfer it over to our new harness. And I'll explain the pin out here in a little bit. This purple one is really important. This one's gonna be, so the function on your light works is this. And then basically this is power, this is ground, power, power. this is for your lumber. And lumber. Then this is com uh, canvas. Canvas. Oh, actually, that makes sense. Usually, these are twisted together, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. They, they use the same color system. Is that really all the wiring for the whole seat? Yeah. It's, the, it's simple. The most complicated one is the passenger because that's got all the different. But this one. I oh, mean, because this isn't this one have a module on the passenger side does not have a module or yeah. yeah. The same. The one is. No, well, I think the passenger side has more wi wiring, yeah. right? That's they weird. Have more huh? wiring than the driver's side. So this this one right here, the gray one. It's for your E90, this is airbag. It's gonna be transferring that clip as well because it fits yes. into the, the yellow clip. And sometimes these do pin them, it's kind of hard, but if you get it right, in there, right there. Flexing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if they're hard, you know, just pops them out real quick. <laughs> and then we're gonna be replacing it with this one right here? Yeah. So these no, have X. Oh, the blue one. This one. Right? Oh, it's only two wires too, yeah. so that's easy. Okay, cool. So cool. yellow goes on the right side. And then I think, I think it's labeled, you know, yellow yeah. and mm -hmm. then, oh, yeah, I think, right? they, but at least they, they do it so that, you know, you know where, where yellow goes, Facts. but yeah, they're the same color. Okay. You hear a little click, pull it back, make sure it's in there. Way okay. Harder. There you go. That was the second click. So that's the airbag. This is for your occupancy, whatever. Seat occupancy is a seatbelt right here. We didn't touch that. That was actually came from the E90. Mm -hmm. So that's why we just kept it original. Mm -hmm. This one had the yellow. It's already labeled here. We pulled Before, this from, it was blue. It was blue. So the connector is what we changed here. And yeah. then the yellow wire went on the, the right side and then the brown wire went on the left side. If you guys look at it from this orientation. Um, and then this one, all the wires you guys saw were dangling over here. We got it repinned. So is this side have it labeled or no? No, but basically you get this little notch. This would be a reference. Yeah, so we put the ground on this side and that's the only thing on this side, right? Yeah, only thing on this side. Okay, flipping this around. Side has canvas canvas so first it goes uh so we're skipping the first pin the mm -hmm. one after the first pin is the yellow green and then the red and brown big wire and then we got red and then purple and then purple we added that for the function for the emblem light that's you added that yeah we added that so the emblem light it's gonna be over Hold here. on. so where's this wire coming from like you put that in here no, no, it was already here, but I'm adding it to the connector. Oh, so this seat, obviously, yeah, because it has the emblem light, you put it into here, mm -hmm. and then what we're gonna go ahead and do, actually, the is do the same thing from inside the car. Correct. So this will be a direct plug and play to actually have all these functions working. Dude, this is so sick. Yeah, This exactly. is so sick, okay. Cool, cool, so that's it at this point. We're just gonna go ahead and put it in the connector, and we're done with the seat section. Yeah, this seat is gonna be done. That's what and I'm talking then, about. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, modules in. Modules sure. in, and it just connects simply. There's nothing special about nothing it. So. Special. Plug yeah, and play. Plug baby. and play. Oh yeah. All right, guys. We'll come back to you once all this is reconnected. Pretty much, just actually, we can just do that real quick, right? Or yeah. Is it kind of a process? Uh, it might be like a little process, but yeah. So I mean, it goes. I can show you before I put it in. This one goes first, then your black one with your notch, and then this one has like a little arrow to show you the orientation of it going that way. 
All right, so it turned out, guys, that this yellow thing is actually meant that this is like the end of the connector. That's not because of the yellow wire. It was just conveniently, though, on the yellow wire. So you can use that as a guiding point. Um, and yeah, that's how it looks like on the inside. OEM plus. And then what's that zip tie for you got early? Oh, it's, it's make it the same way it came from factory. Yeah, you kind of use it. Oh, I thought you were doing something janky. You're just yeah. doing nah, OEM nah, plus, nah, huh? Come on, man. OEM plus. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. If you guys want custom seats, you know, $4,000, make sure to hit these guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at least they'll do it. Okay. But this is honestly like really sick. That's super sick. Yeah, because they're zip tied uh, from OEM actually. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. I actually yeah. never do that. Once I cut the zip tie, call it a day. Do you really think you need to zip tie it? Eh. I don't think it's ever came undone for me. No, but you know. Safety first. the way it came. Why not? OEM plus, guys. Yeah. OEM plus. OEM plus. <laughs> so that one wire you guys saw for the seat emblem, uh, we need to pretty much get another wire on this female section connected to it coming from the car uh, to where it will tell the seat or at least that seat emblem. I mean, it'll give power to that seat emblem um, once one of these lights actually turn on. So long story short, any of these interior car lights you guys see when you open the doors, for example, those lights up there, that light over here, the light down there, we're gonna tap into one of those. On an E92, there's a light right back here. It's much easier to tap into that, but because we don't have that rear center console, we're gonna be tapping into that, making a wire into one of these pins, and then basically that's where we're gonna connecting into our seat harness where we put that extra pin um, to get our seat that you know, that light effect. So anywho, we'll show you guys the route he goes in terms of wiring and what pin we get into here. Right now we're trying to figure out a way uh, to route the wire from that light, maybe somewhere on the side over here, and then to this bad boy. All right guys, so we got the wiring pretty much sorted out for the most part. So we have this yellow wire, which is our own wire. It is a thicker gauge, but thicker is better than smaller. So we got that pretty much routed through here, coming down over here, and we're actually gonna have it connected and pinned into here in a little bit. We'll show you guys that here in a minute. But uh, yeah, most likely you guys gonna end up routing it through this side, bringing it through here, bringing it through here. Um, but uh, yeah, these wires, what does it go to, bro? Yeah, this one goes to your light that goes right here on the bottom by your foot. And then brown will be your negative. This would be a positive. Uh, you can double check with the voltmeter. But yeah, you tapped into the power. You don't need ground because it's already on your um, connector. So you just need the power. So we just literally tapped into the, what is that, red and blue? Yeah. So in our case, red and blue. And like I said, uh, we just probably a self tapper there. And then we just kind of got it routed. So we'll show you guys what pin we got you pin into here. And then bada bing bada bang, we open the doors. Not only with this light up, but also our seat light, which is gonna be super oh. sick. Oh, look at that, guys. Ooh, look at that. Mm. Emertech, boys. Alpha one, baby. All right, guys, took some trial and error, but as you guys can see right now, the lights are on. This is, actually, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, basically the, the first gen of these lights are pretty dim. Once we actually upgrade these to the M3 style ones, you can be able, actually you can definitely see it now. So it's definitely on at night. It'll be a whole lot more apparent. It's just, yeah, that's just uh, the first gen, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, we got this stuff wired up. Um, it turned out, actually, no, we didn't turn on anything. We're just gonna, we're gonna show you guys what we did exactly. So uh, first thing, let me go ahead and disconnect this real quick. And then I'll show you guys uh, the pin that we went from the car uh, to what we showed you guys earlier uh, on the bench. So this is, so you guys saw again, the pin out on the other black connector when we had it on the bench. So basically, if you guys look at it through this side, uh, anywho, so if I go ahead and flip it this way, not this side with the arrow, the other side without the arrow, where is this purple wire? So it's the first pin next to that big connector right there. Next to the red one. Yeah, right there. So that is pretty much how you guys want to wire it up. Uh, we Again, we did it from the light that's up here. You guys can do it from the rear light on an E92. And that's probably the two recommended lights, right? Yeah, exactly. Just to make life a little easier. So now that that's done, I'm going to reconnect all this, put it all back together, guys. This is super sick. All right, guys. While they're actually removing the seat buckle off of the passenger side seat, what we did notice is that the passenger side seat does not have a module. And this one right here as well had a smaller module from the passenger seat of the F80. So um, there's only three connectors onto here. Hopefully Hopefully that's not going to affect anything and then obviously we're going to be repainting as well there's a few more wires as you guys can see on this one um we'll show you guys that here in a little bit but while that stuff is getting done uh the f80c is almost installed we have the front two bolts on there we have everything else put together it is filthy i do need a vacuum we have the seat buckle put back on thankfully this uses the same bolt um as the e90 so i pretty much just transferred over that bolt we got the seat buckle there probably want to go ahead and upgrade these to uh lime rock orange i think it'd be super sick nice contrast same thing i did on the 435 um but anywho's down the road your man's broke right now so it is what it is so anyways let's go ahead and put the last two bolts and then the driver's side is officially done that is looking so much better all right guys it's been a few hours later not gonna lie we got the driver's seat fully connected it's actually pretty darn easy um but unfortunately the passenger
passenger side, not only is the FADC for the passenger side different than the M4, um, but also getting the heated seat function to work looks like it needs some extra wiring. So we've been kind of noodling with this for the past, again, couple of hours. We'll get back to you guys once we actually figure out something. Hopefully it's not gonna be too much longer because we're starving, but we wanna get this video off for you guys and I also wanna see this car get done. So hopefully, hopefully we figure it out here. If not, um, we'll probably wait for another day, get my boy Nick, probably can check out the diagrams and you know, we'll, we'll see how things go. I mean but it's not looking too good, I'm not gonna lie. So unfortunately guys, the passenger seat was a big pain in the butt. We couldn't get everything to work just right off the get go. Um, this right here is the finished product, which I'll show you guys the pin out here in a little bit, um, but it took us a very, very, very long time to figure out. And on top of that, you do have to remember to also not only swap out that big connector, but also the seat buckle comes with that connector. That's just the standard connector for that. And then the other connector uh, that you'll need uh, with the airbag, I believe. So make sure you have those two wires. And then here's the final connector uh, with all the pin out right here and last but not least this last wire right over here is what's needed for the LED light on the top of the seat so uh, yeah we were gonna go ahead and figure out what pin to pin that in once we actually figure out what pin we're gonna use from inside the car like we did on the driver's side but yeah as you guys can see the seats do look a whole lot better they are lighting up when you open the door it's just such a sick detail for this build because I want every little thing to work all right guys, so we have some good news and some bad news. The good news is we have the driver's seat fully installed. I mean, we got the, the emblem working right over here. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera. Emblem is working, heated seat's working, all the buttons are working absolutely perfectly for the driver's side. Now the passenger side, we tried getting everything to work. Now all the buttons and switches work. Um, we also got the seat emblem to work on the passenger side as well, but then the seat rail just randomly failed. We didn't notice that something was bent and it looked weird originally, um, but we're like, hey, whatever, let's just go ahead and install it anyways. I installed it and now I can't even uninstall it because uh, basically I can't even get the bolts, I can't get the seat to move back. Basically the seat's moving like this. So this seat rail is not moving, this seat rail is moving. Um, basically these seats are only controlled by one motor, so the fact that basically it failed on one side is not really because of us installing it because we got power to the motor. It's more the sense of something is wrong with the seat rail, maybe something clogged it um, and then snapped the motor or something. So that is super unfortunate. Now we're just gonna have to figure out a way to actually get these seat rails off, which sucks. Um, so yeah, that's gonna be a whole nother mission in itself, but long story short, everything I showed you guys earlier on how to install them is the proper way to install it. We, I'm just gonna have to go ahead now and uh, figure out a way to get that passenger seat out. You guys can see right over here, there's only one motor that controls both seat rails. Basically, cut, pretty much goes across. Um, so this side is not working whatsoever, and this is working perfectly. So that's clearly, I don't know, that, that shouldn't be happening. There's no way. Um, so again, that being said, I need to go ahead and uh, probably transfer over this seat rail. This seat is not really selling for anything. Unfortunately, the driver's seat airbag is blown. So we've had this interior up for like dimes and nickels. We could not sell it. So I guess the good news is we do have a seat rail in stock. So I'm gonna go ahead, unbolt this, transfer it over, and hopefully that is our issue um, and you know nothing else. It just, it looked weird before I installed it, but I figured maybe, just maybe, it just needs to get plugged in and used. But unfortunately, yeah, no, something busted with the seat and I spent 1500 bucks on those seats. So it's kind of hurts, kind of hurts. Anyways, thankfully we have this. Hopefully I can get to this on that car, swap this over and it should be easy peasy lemon breeze. So right now the seat's all the way up. I don't know if you guys can tell, but pretty much pay attention to this bolster. It's not gonna be moving and this one's gonna be moving backwards because that seat rail's working, this one's not. So if I go ahead and click back, can they, I don't know if they can see that on camera. Yeah, and then you guys can hear pretty much the motor is giving out right now, so. That really sucks, that really blows. I'm gonna have to figure out a way to get the seat out. Usually when seats fail like this inside the car, it is a big pain in the butt to get it out. So again, I'll probably get back to you guys and actually get the seat out. I'll probably have to pretty much take it off of the seat rails itself, like unbolt it all and take apart the seat from inside the car like that because there's no way with that snapped cable that I'm gonna be able to move the other motor. So it is what it is. <laughs> So, yep, this motor is definitely the issue here. So now we gotta figure out a way to get this motor out of here, which I have no idea how. So we'll get back to you guys here in a little bit. Obviously this just broke right now, literally as installed. This was not like this when we installed it. We noticed something was tweaked before. I just really hoping it wasn't anything major. Turned out something major exactly what, I don't know, nothing got in the way. Like it has clearance to move. Again, the driver's side moves no problem. This is just really unfortunate. So anyways, yeah, like I said earlier, guys, we're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take apart as much as I can, try to get this seat out of here, 
and hopefully, hopefully, uh, save, uh, hopefully save the seat. I'm really hoping because there's no way anyone's gonna sell me a passenger side Silverstone seat by itself unless the driver's seat was blown and they sold the rest of the interior. So uh, it's gonna be so tough. I'm really, I'm kind of a little bit of a mood killer, but I'm hoping by the end of this video, guys, it's gonna be good news. So stay tuned. Well, we got half of it out. We gotta figure out a way to get the hard part out, which is the side with the seized up motor side. So this thing right over here, so one of the connectors went into the motor. There's only one motor right over here, but there's this thing right over here that we didn't even have plugged in. That's right above this section right over here. I don't know what this is. I might have to run the part number, see what this is exactly, but maybe this stopped it and broke the motor because it wasn't connected. So yeah, that's a little strange. Not sure what this is. Hopefully it's not important because I think the other seat's gonna have the same thing. This actually is not, I believe this is not on the M4 seats. It's just on the F80 seat. So maybe, I don't know, maybe you have to tap these wires into um, the other yellow and brown wire we had. Maybe. We'll have to figure this out. Let me just get this thing out first so we at least know that our car is good and we're not stuck with this piece of metal in my car because I need to get this thing out one way or another. So at this point guys, I took a little bit of a break. We got the thing out. Basically all that I did is that I reattached the motor back into the left side, kind of gave it power, negative, positive, uh, and then pretty much got the motor to move back and actually got the rail off. So that wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, so that's good. Um, so it turns out this right over here, um, this little sensor, as you guys can see, this sensor right over here is a seat position sensor. We didn't actually plug this in um, on our uh, F80 seats. So that's, I believe, the, that's the only thing we didn't plug in. And that's the thing that damaged, ended up damaging the seat. So that being said, uh, I'm assuming there's a way to wire that in. I don't really know how. Um, and there's, because basically it needs to go into this yellow connector. As you guys can see, the, the F80 yellow connector is a lot bigger than the uh, E90 yellow connector. So you can't really put as much things in here as you can in here. So I don't, and this doesn't go into the module. This goes directly into the car. So uh, I don't really know if there's a workaround around this. Uh, so that being said, I, I'm not gonna move this seat too far forward. My mistake was I literally held the button as far as it went forward. It went really, really, really far. Like it went almost to the dashboard and that's how it broke. Um, so basically the seat doesn't know when to stop. And that's why it pretty much destroyed everything underneath the car. Um, so now that I know that, I'm just gonna move it just enough to put in the two screws, move it back just enough to put in the two screws, and a normal use shouldn't break it. It's just more of like, what I did was like too much. I just thought that like any any normal seat would just stop and uh, you know it'll stop itself before it breaks anything. So that being said, thankfully we figured it out. Thankfully we have another seat right here to finish the job today. Um, unfortunately it is a sport line seat, so that kind of sucks, but at the same time, again, we've had this thing for like three months now, couldn't sell it, so it doesn't matter to us at this point. Garbage. Um, so this would have run me $200 to buy off eBay. So technically, I just made myself $200. I'm pretty happy about that. Let's just go ahead and remove this rail, transfer it over. Hopefully, it's not gonna be too difficult. All right, guys, so we have the seat rail. I already went ahead and moved uh, the, uh, what's it called? The buckle over. So we got the buckle. This was that sensor I was talking about earlier, guys. Um, Basically, where this thing snapped, it snapped right over here, and this thing stopped right here. So basically, this seat where I was moving way too much forward, pretty much snapped the motor right off to this connection and completely lost connection to this side. So now that I know pretty much how to kind of avoid the situation, that's what we're gonna do to avoid the situation. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed now. Hopefully, it is pretty easy, and uh, at least you know how to remove this thing if it ever happens again, so I'm not too worried about it. Thankfully, thankfully, we have another one of these just chilling. All right, guys, take two. Hopefully, I don't break this seat rail. <laughs> that would suck. All right, I get that connected. Both sides are moving. It's a good sign. Lights coming on. Just like that. I don't know if you guys can see that. All right, so now that we got that kind of dialed in, let's get this uh, Keys Motorsports uh, fire extinguisher installed. Or reinstalled, of course, because uh, safety first. So by the way, I don't know if I told you guys earlier that that cable that ended up being missing 
Uh, the cable that we didn't end up plugging, most people don't end up plugging that in or being able to wire that into the car whatsoever. Um, so there are ways to get that wired in, but everyone that I've seen do the swap left that cable unplugged. So I'm assuming no one really tells you that you can't max out the seat left and right because there's no max out. It will literally just keep going until it breaks. So just a little FYI guys, um, just so when you're putting in the screws, kind of just move it far enough back to put in the screw. Don't over, don't put it back too much because that's how you break things. Um, so now that I know, now that you guys know, let's get this bad boy just installed. And just like that guys, we are officially done. Both seats are lined up, looking pretty good. So, oh, I'm so happy we have the frame rails here, babe. <laughs> I honestly, I, I, I would be so mad to make a video that's incomplete and just say, hey, well, everything kind of worked. No, thankfully everything did work. We literally have everything working on both of these seats 100% other than the passenger heated seats, which that's not really too important right now, but I'll probably show you guys how to do that down the road. Um, a lot of people in the forums don't really have ways to do it, but I know there's a way to do it. I just need the right guy to help me do it. So uh, we got the driver's seat. We have the driver's seats easy, plug and play heated, no problem there. Um, so eventually we'll get this stuff knocked out. But without further ado guys, that is what I'm talking about. That looks amazing. Eventually we're gonna get these door cards redone in Silverstone as well. I'm actually gonna be selling the full E90 M3 interior, getting black door cards, getting them restitched in Silverstone. I think it's gonna look absolutely beautiful. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much gonna conclude that, I think. What do you think, babe? Looks good? Looks pretty good. I think you should do, um a little bit of B-roll. B-rolls. I will do. We'll give you guys some B-roll. Mm -hmm.